realistic in the fact that no one wants to be here <laughs> and everyone wants to go home. Okay, so where do we get started? Let me go ahead and get Excel up because I'm sure it's going to be in Excel at some point. We were working on the homework, like, really, like, before we came here. Yep. There's a piece of problems that I don't even know which start on. Okay, we can start on those. Because half the time that's home, or it ends up being for the test. We've covered most everything for the test, by the way. Is, is the test multiple choice? It's the same way the homework is. So some of it's multiple guess, and some of it's, uh, I hope this is the right number. Okay. So it just depends on which one. So yes. Uh, I do not want to use lockdown browser. Okay, let me see. We're on topic three, right? What do you got? Well, I'm getting it up. Thirty one. Okay, so I'm in the view, so I'm gonna hide myself view. Okay. So I'm going to do so. Oh. So this is so thirty one is let me see. I'm going to choose different numbers, so my, I am sharing, right? I'm sharing. Make that bigger. Say bigger. Click. Bigger. Work with me, computer. So this is uh, your, is it the back to knee length? Yeah. Is, and I'm just going to choose a random number because you're not going to get the number. And they probably do a different number each time anyway. So let's do 35 inches. Actually, I'm going to do this. Mu is 35. And I'm not even going to use units because units are just units in here. Uh, and you have a standard deviation of 1.1 inches. So. Uh, these data are often used to design different seats, including aircraft seat, train seats, yada, yada, yada. Instead of using 0.05 for significant values, they want you to use 0.01. So you need to do uh, Z, uh, oh, sorry, critical value is 0.01. So less than 0.01 less than or equal to 2.01. Find the back to knee lengths, uh, separating the significant values from those that are not significant. Uh, and they want you to know if is, let's say, 37.4 significant. That's what we're looking at, right? So the first thing you have to do is don't do math. Sounds crazy, but go with me. Let me change share screen to this. Z table. You have to find a Z table. So Z score or Z table.com is one Z table or whatever. So what you need to do is you need to go down to the positive values here and do 0 0.01. Actually, that's the wrong way. Uh, sorry, you have to point look for 0 0.01 in this table, uh, which is right 0 0.01, not 0 0.01. Um, negative. 0.23, probably five, because I can just guess that it's more or less halfway between there. So what I'm doing is I'm finding where 0.1 should be, which should be between here and here. And I can go negative here. I go to the left, I'd say negative 2.3, and I go to the top, and I'm at three, between two and three. So I do negative 2.35 as my Z score. Uh, so let me go back here. So 
So but you could also do There's another way you could do this. Um, uh, let me go back up to here. You can. Uh, use uh, norm this here to do the same thing. So yes, yes. Where is it at? Uh, screen share again. So you can use instead of this, norm dist, which looks up a normal distribution. You Not to work. Let's just be doing one second. Inverse the formula on it turns. Wait, it's not coming up with the right one. I will figure out later. So anyway, it should be this. So what we're going to do is we're looking for um, the uh, formula x is equal to or x plus or minus z times standard should be let's see if I can remember standard deviation. Wait. I'm trying to remember it off the top of my head without looking at the book. So it should be um u standard deviation. Oh it's x minus u. But we're going to check. I'm going to check to make sure I'm doing the right one because I'm not 100% sure. But the uh, z score. Oh, I'm doing this wrong. I won. I'm sorry. That's for they have something different. Z is equal to x minus u over standard deviation. So what we need to do is find x because we're looking for the value on the up and low end for where 2.35 is where we're at. So what we need to do is mathematically rewrite the formula. So z times sd is equal to x minus u. So z times standard deviation plus u equals x. Okay. Remember that from algebra way back when? Because the idea is we know everything but x. And once we have everything but x, we can just plug it in. Oh, it's supposed to be times, not, not minus. There we go. Then we can just calculate it. So equals our z value. Oh, let me see. So we have um, x equals z value times your standard deviation plus your mean. That will give us the low end. The next thing we have to do, let's do that x low, is x high, which would be the absolute value, abs, of that. Because you can do it, we did it on the left end, so we have to find it on the right end. Times the standard deviation plus the mean. So that would give us, it's called a confidence interval, even though they're not calling it a confidence interval, 
between 32.415 and 37.585, which is our upper and lower end. And then is that between those two? If it is, it's not significant. If it isn't, it is significant. Okay? And then you just change these to be whatever you need. This, there's a way you could look that up. You could also just Google Z value 4.01 and it would just give you it as well. Uh, I'm a big proponent of if you're doing stuff like that because if you're looking for constants in math, Google will come up with them. Just look them up. If you hate tables, which I'm okay with you hating tables, I know not everyone likes them. Uh, so make sure you get the right number. I'm probably just gonna hang out in the back of the room and make sure you're not like paying somebody to take the test or stuff like that, okay? Okay. And that's how a bunch of these work, is just like that. Once you have that, once you change this number and these two, they'll just pop up. And yeah, that's the whole, we're talking about conference intervals where technically that's how we're sure that 99.9% .9 of the true mean falls between them is what we're talking about. But whatever. Okay. Next. Or was that a bunch of them? Fifty, fifty or fifty-one, you say? There's too many homework problems here, by the way. Yes, I don't care really what kind of Excel spreadsheet you bring in. That's if you use a, a master template. I don't care what you bring in for spreadsheets. If you have it ready to go, and you can just run through all the problems and get down in here in twenty minutes, you can get down in here in twenty minutes. Okay. I will stay here until you leave, but I don't want to. I'm having a hard time trying to get Excel on the Chromebook, so I'm trying to figure that out. Mm. You have like, a Chromebook? Yeah. I, every, every time I try downloading it, it says like it's not compatible. It's not. I might have something. Let me do this one, then I will do a quick Google search. I may have something. It's not going to be off. It's not going to be Office. I'll look. Uh, so we have a proximate, use a normal approximation to find a probability of an indicated number of voters. In this case, okay, so a different one, completely different one. I still, it bugs me that I have to extend this way to go that way, by the way. Make it bigger. So we assume. Uh, let's say 120 voters uh, between the uh, 18 to 24 are randomly selected. Suppose a previous study showed that among these voters, 18 to 24, 22% voted. So probability that fewer and I'll just change this to 25 percent. Then 24 voted. So it's a probability, right? Easy enough. Uh, so our we have to figure out P, Q, X, and M. So X is 24. Right, 24 people. Uh, N is the number of people, 120. Our P is 120 times 0.25. Actually, that's wrong. Uh, it's 0.25, rather. And our Q is 0.75. 45% chance of voting, 75% chance. So, what this is is a cumulative probability. So the easiest way to do this
So we need to go between technically one and 120. Not a big deal, by the way. So what you can do is this, and extend it down to 120. It's not a big deal. What I did, because everyone's like, ah! If you have a number sequence and you want to continue said number sequence in Excel, you highlight the first three cells of that number sequence enough so that if you remember algebra from way back when, uh, I don't know how long ago that was, you need three numbers to make a sequence, right? And once you have those numbers, Excel will be like, oh, so that's what you wanna do with those. So if I do one, two, three, then I can drag that down to 120, and not have to copy and do everything else. Nice little trick I found out, who knows how long ago. Um, so this is a binomial. So binom.dist. So the number of successes would be, uh, how many people voted? So how many would have voted? So this would have been that times 0.25, right? That's how many people voted. The number of trials is that. The probability is that. And we are looking at a cumulative uh, distribution. So we have to make sure, oh wait, sorry, number of successes will be this. I'm sorry, it's actually F1 or F2. That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at number one. I'm looking at how many people did that one. Uh, A2 will stay the same. So I put the dot, dollar signs around it. And B6 will stay the same, so I put the dollar signs around it. So those are locked in. So I do that. And it shows me the probability of exactly one person voting. And then you take this and you double click. And then you go down to 24. Hey, look, 12%. And if I go all the way down to the bottom, I'm at one. It just gets so close to one, it doesn't care. And that's how you find those out. It's norm.dist successes, number of trials, probability, true. Because you're doing cumulative. Okay. Where did the chat go? My chat bar disappeared. I don't know where it went. Making sure no one else says. Okay, so that's how you do those. It's you use Excel to cheat. Sorry, to use a computer to get the correct answer so you don't have to do that annoying math. What else? So those, oh, I was gonna look for this up real quick. So if anybody has a Chromebook, I'm gonna see. There is a LibreOffice, L-I-B-R-E-O-F-F-I-C-E extension to Chrome that allows you to create, edit, and view Microsoft Word documents. LibreOffice is an open source um, clone of Office 2003. Yep. Based off of 2003, which is 90 to 95% of what we run. Maybe more because LibreOffice is actively updating. So they like to actually keep stuff working. Uh, so yeah. Sorry, you said, yeah, I remembered about that. And I actually like LibreOffice. If you can't get a free version through your various organizations, I always tell people to go download LibreOffice because it's free 
and it's not nearly as massive as office. The only thing I truly like in office right now is publisher. And right now, by the way, yes, don't tell me I know I need to slow down. I'm trying. <laughs> okay, so we've got the cumulative distribution. And the only difference between this and of exactly 23 is changing this true right here to false. So if it asks how many, or what's the probability of eight, you would just say false, and you get your answer. Which is just a small difference. Okay, mm -hmm. so what else we got? Can you do 35? Sure. Uh, assume a population of three, five, and ten. Assume sample size of two are randomly selected from a population listed below the nine different samples. Wait. What? So you're pulling. Two values out of three. I apologize for Pearson. This is this is weird. This is by the way, you can't find mean and standard deviation with less than a sample size of three. Just like to point that out. <laughs> No, I, I'll be able to get it. I'll be able to get it. I just would like you to know that you shouldn't have to. Let me pull up the textbook and see what crazy methods they want you to use. This Technically, this textbook is not the worst, by the way. Um. I don't have sample proportions. Um, that's a sample mean I got. Yes, where's the standard deviation? Okay, here we go. N is population sample. With population, we can be sure of it. Okay, this is weird, but we'll work with it. because you never have a population this size. So let's say we have, here's our population. I'm gonna pull, I don't know, is your numbers three, five, and 10? Uh, or is it just random numbers? Three, four, five. Three, so I could do mine, cool. Five, 10. 
That's my population. So we find our population mean. It's going to be equal to sum of these numbers divided by 3. Hey, look, there's my population mean. Why do I need my population mean? Population standard deviation is square root of the sum of x minus mean squared divided by capital N, which is your sample size of your population. So you do uh, square difference equals this minus this squared. So I'm just taking the mean minus the individual one. I'm also going to lock this into a seven. Gives us a difference of nine and just go down. So then I do. So I'm going to sum up all of these. Divide that by three. Oh, I have to do the square root. And let's see if I mess this up or not. 2.94, which, let's see if I did this wrong. Three decimal places, I have 2.944. Oh, I did it right, cool. And then, so that's how you do that one, the first part. You just find the population mean, which is just the mean of all your values. And then you find the square difference, difference squared, sum them up and divide it by n and take the whole square root of the whole thing. What you're gonna have to do after that is the standard deviation of each of the nine samples and summarize the sampling distribution of the standard deviations in the format of a table representing the probability distributions of the distinct standard deviation values. Because that's not confusing at all. So they want the standard deviations of each individual population. So in mine, I have nine populations. So I have Wait, how many different populations? Nine, so I have, so let's do population. I'm gonna do this a little bit different. So I want, because I only have three, this will be an easier way to do this. So I am just, I'm gonna go fast to put in data. Right so far, 10, 5, 10, 10. Uh, so pop mean. I could also use average, by the way. I don't even have to do that. I could have just done this. And deviation of these two, which does work by the way. Once again, so pop, so stdev.p, and then you can highlight everything, will give you just standard deviations. So then I could do zero. What is going on? Oh, is it? What in the, I'm, so I'm looking at their stuff.
Sorry, the, the, the thing they have set up is weird. Because they want a population three. And then they want point seven, but there's nothing. So what they want you to do next, and it makes no sense because on here it doesn't, their numbers don't make sense. Is it wants you to find the S? Oh, I have S squared. Do I have this? Wait, did I? No, I didn't do that. I don't know what this wants. It makes no sense. It, what it's trying to do is it, you'll want to set up the, pro, the standard deviations into four different categories. And then you have to find out how many fall into each category. So for instance, on this one, I have one, two, three at a pop or standard deviation of zero. So I'd have a one in three chance. Uh, I have this one that came up with 0 0.7, which I have yet to figure out, but you have two at one here. So I have two nines. I have a couple here at 2.5, which is two nines. And I have two more at 3.5, which is two nines. So you're just taking those and put them in, into each one. The mean of the sample deviation of the standard deviations. Add them all up, divide by nine. Or, like I said, average function. In this case, mine's 1.5 repeating. Do the sam uh, generally speaking, sample standard deviations are biased estimators. Just be aware of that. And yeah, that's one I don't much care for because you would never do that. And Pearson is terrible, and they'll have weird numbers. Just be aware. Once again, if it, they do bad math and it annoys you to the point you just give up. If you could show me that you've done work, like just take a picture of your scrawl paper or whatever and submit that as part of your assignment uh, on either on a private forum, one of the two ways to get a hold of me or even just for your homework and then I'll see it. And I'll give you credit because it's annoying and I'm aware it's not my choice. Okay, what else? Can you tell I gave all my kids tests today so I actually have energy? <laughs> yeah, there's also that. Uh, yeah, you know, I get that. It's, it's why this class is both really, really fun to me and kind of boring at the same time because I don't get to like do things. As weird as that sounds, so. So I'm like, and I don't know how much you're actually getting out of this. Yeah, I mean that whole, yeah. Like you'd be getting tons out of it or you can get next to nothing and it all depends on you. And it's really hard for me because I don't know if you're even doing any videos or watching or reading or anything. At least when I'm lecturing, I know I'm not talking to you about something. The only thing I'm glad is I usually get my rant, one rant a day. Uh, you know, that's, that's life. Just means I gotta go get tea early and I don't care. I live by the tea, I die by the tea. I'm like Uncle Iroh from uh, Avatar. Um, I need to think. I've seen some decent ones out. 
a couple hundred bucks. I yeah, I know it's not, I know I usually get end up getting desktops for like hundred fifty, two hundred dollars refurbished. Yeah. If you're in your third year, look for that one of those refurbished laptops. You can get a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. What? Yeah. But it's an extension. It says this file is designed for a PC using Windows software. It's not compatible with your device. It's not done from OS. So look, do LibreOffice extension. Oh, so, oh, it's for Chrome OS. Okay, okay, okay. Let me see. Wait, no. Um, Where's the scenario? I just buy a cheap laptop on Amazon and get paid on the user. LibreOffice Editor, it's an extension on Chrome. <laughs> yeah, as long as you don't get it on Wish, you're fine. Like, I ordered a laptop three years later. <gasps> Why do I have a laptop? <laughs> mm -hmm. Try to go to. Can I just like download Excel now? Like, no, go to like on um, Brain or go to uh, the uh, the class on LoudCloud and then try and open up the Excel document there. Like all oh, from one of the things that you posted. Yeah, or even one of those. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I Ideally, it should be acting like a like Google Docs does is I think how it's supposed to work. Uh, direct access to create docs, LXLS, or PowerPoints from scratch with this editor detects that you're using uh, one of those documents, it opens it directly in the editor. So, the office editor online, which contains uh, open office calc, which is your spreadsheet. Uh, oh, does open and Libra and Excel. And it can do documents, I said read more, PowerPoints, so the big three. Does anybody online have anything that they would like to cover for today? Since we're at 40 minutes and people's brains are already hurting. I will once again remind you have projects somewhat coming up. Yes, I know the, the midterm's a little bit more daunting, but please don't forget. <laughs> That's why I, every day <laughs> I'm gonna tell people. So you don't so you can't say I didn't remind you. Yeah. yeah. Um, if not, you guys are, you guys are good here? I, yeah, I'm good. I, I yeah, I, I record these. Uh, it's on my YouTube channel. Uh, look for easy stats. I think I, I listed it. I, it's going to go up right after this. Uh, I think the only comment I've ever gotten was for someone trying to get me to go to a porn site. Nice. Fun times. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, don't follow those. Anywho, uh, Run away, everyone. Hafida's in. Stop, share.